Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Tentacom video, I'm going to be covering a nice, well, rather exciting, actually, piece of news concerning AMD's Liquid VR. Now, Liquid VR is a new piece of technology that's just been unveiled today by AMD at GDC 2015, and the idea behind it is it's designed to improve immersiveness and responsiveness in virtual reality environments, for example, the Oculus Rift. And it's looking to do pretty brilliantly, in my personal opinion, from what I'm seeing right now. Oculus, who are of course one of the driving and pioneers behind uh, virtual reality, have said the following. Achieving presence in a virtual world continues to be one of the most important elements to delivering amazing VR. This was said by the CEO of uh, Oculus, Brendan Earp. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. We are excited to have AMD working with us on their part of the latency equation, introducing new support for new features like asynchronous time warping and late late latching, late latching, I'm sorry, that's a bit of a mouthful, and compatibility improvements that ensure that Oculus users have great experiences on AMD hardware. Now, of course, let's just be totally honest, that's a nice quote and all and will look good in AMD's press releases and so forth. But what exactly is it? Well, you might not be too familiar with the phrase presence in virtual reality, but once you actually hear about the explanation, it's really quite simple. The basic premise is that once a user, to, for a user, in other words, let's say yourself, to feel fully immersed in an environment, a virtual environment, when a, move, when a user moves their head, for example, or their hands, or what have you, you want that reaction to be instantaneous. For example, a, a bit of an over-exaggeration, but let's say that the time between you moving your right hand, um, say, I don't know, up, is, say, half a second in the game. That's not how real life works, and it can present uh, motion sickness in some people, or just flat-out destroying the realism. And so, this is completely reverse. What AMD are trying to do is actually reduce that. So reducing the latency involves lots of moving parts, and most of this, of course, is not just the software and the GPU power, but also it's hoping to, and I quote, um, intends to bring smooth, liquid-like motion and responsiveness to developers and by content creators for lifelike presence in VR environments powered by AMD hardware. So when's this actually happening? Is it going to be like six months from now? Nope. AMD have just released the alpha version of the Liquid VR SDK. SDK, of course, stands for Software Development Kit, and it introduces a massive batch of new features, um, and it will be exclusive to AMD hardware. This is a bit like NVIDIA and their game works in this particular environment. Now, there's not a massive amount of information at the moment, but we have Hardware Accelerated Time Warps, which is a pretty cool name, but what it uses is update information of the user's head position after a frame has been rendered, and then it warps that image to reflect a new viewpoint before sending it to the VR headset. Um, it's kind of cool. The idea behind this is it effectively minimizes latency, which is, after all, the main important thing here. Affinity Multi-GPU. This one's pretty simple. The most important part being multi-GPU, of course. The idea here is it's really going to harness the power of multiple graphics cards. So let's say you've got two Radeon R9 290s in your system, just for example. It's going to much better utilize those cards to improve frame rates in virtual reality software by actually letting you assign specific tasks to each of the GPU. So... Rather than having the GPUs do what they are now, theoretically you could have, say, GPU A render the left eye and GPU B render the right eye. Or if you happen to be super duper rich and you've got like four uh, you know, GPUs or something, you can imagine how much even more power you could have. And let's face it, because virtual reality A requires super high frame rates to have the best response and b to have high resolutions this is definitely important and finally there's direct to display and this allows things such as booting directly to a virtual reality naturally this also goes to for example extended desktop displays and should allow virtual reality desktops to become much easier 
Now, there is a lot more stuff besides, and I'm actually reaching out to AMD and asking what they can provide me information, but this has just gone up. So, at the moment, information is scarce, really scarce on the ground. But, of course, we will cover it all. But, anyway, hopefully I've been fairly conscious throughout this video. I'm getting by over about four and a half, five hours sleep, which is not making the most ideal of situations. But, I'm back to normal tomorrow. Well, as normal as I can possibly be anyway, which most people would scream in terror. But, still, I are going to leave you guys to it in this particular instance. Take care and bye for now.